Welcome to this last minute AdMaths revision video. Uh, today we'll be looking at calculus and pretty much stuff like differentiation, integration, and its application in kinematics. So, suppose you had the graph or the function of f of x equals kx to the power of n and you were asked to integrate that so you might you probably know that you just take off the power and just before you do that just multiply it all together so you'd get um, your differential function would be uh, n kx to the power of n minus 1 and that's going to be in brackets and there you go so that would be your differentiation of this and just because you don't really understand what that means, it is basically if you had the graph of f of x, and here we just had x, what it's re effectively saying is if you were to have a line going across, or a curve, such as this curve, a cubic, if you were to have um, this function being the, the uh, cubic, and if you were to differentiate it, you would get the gradient function. So, for example, if I were to say, oh, I want to go to this point, what is the gradient at this point? Well, what you would do is you'd look at the differentiated graph, which um, it might look a bit something like this. So I'll, I'll clear it for you guys. Um, if you had, were to have a graph, like this, your your differentiated function would probably look something like it's going to be positive here, and it's going to then probably come down, and obviously the gradient is re is negative here, and then here it becomes positive, so you, you'd have something that looks like this, and then once it becomes uh, positive. So that's the point where it hits this axis and it goes up like that. So this function over here is basically the gradient function of this function up here. So if I were to go to any point on a function here, that point has a gradient, a tangent, a tangent instantaneously. It only crosses the curve at one point. And that point, that gradient, can be graphed at the same x value. So if this was a, had a gradient of 1, at 1 here, and at that same x value, you would have a point there. And that's pretty much what differentiation is all about. It finds the gradient at any point due to the fact we can make a function out of it known as the gradient function. But then what would happen if you were to have the reverse? You were given the gradient function of a curve such as this one. Uh, so if this was the gradient function you basically add uh, you basically want to find out what the original function was. So what you can do is you can go backwards in differentiation to find that, and that is known as indefinite integration. So suppose this was a function and we had the the function of this as our gradient function. Now this gradient function would be the same if a graph looked like this, because the, the gradients at each point are the same. So from our gradient function alone, we can't reproduce the original graph. So we have to add a constant on the end and this constant is why we have plus c in all of our um, indefinite integration. But suppose you were to have um, to find the area under a graph which is known as definite integration. Well if you're doing that you'd have basically I think it was Leibniz who did this. He worked out these bands under the graph he'd basically compile it all together and after doing that you would get your original function back 
um, you, you wouldn't just get the original function back, but after integrating and getting the original function back, you'd be able to work out the distance between those two points on the original function, and that will give you your area here. Now, obviously, you have that plus C issue, which we come across, but because you're subtracting it from both sides, that plus C cancels out. And that also allows you to find the uh, area between two curves. So, for example, you have a curve that comes across like this and a curve that might come across like this. By integrating both, you, you can work out the area under both of them, and you can just subtract one from the other to get the area in between. And obviously you might be wondering, well, what happens if this, this negative area here It's under the graph, so obviously what, what about that? But obviously this area under the graph, we, it's not going to be counted. It's going to be counted negatively because, uh, so you get a negative area there. And that will help it all work out when you're subtracting one from the other. Uh, but then you also have applications to all this calculus. So for example, you have... Uh, your distance, your velocity, and your acceleration, and obviously you guys know about SUVAT, uh, but that is for uh, constant acceleration. Now obviously ac the acceleration function might change if there's jolting and jerking like on a roller coaster. So uh, what you'll find is that you have your function for acceleration. So suppose acceleration is increasing constantly, that acceleration might be uh, f of x equals 2x, let's say. And then you want to find out the velocity at any point. So you basically integrate, and we, and you also have that plus c you have to take into account. But what we do know is that it might give you additional information in the question. For example, it'll say uh, the object starts at rest. And it also starts at the origin, which means s and v will have constant of 0. So then what you can do is you can um, just integrate this. So you basically, the power here is going to be 1. So then you just add 1 on. So you get x squared, divide the whole thing. So it becomes the, the, the v function is going to be x squared. And you check that by differentiating it. x squared, bring it down, you get 2x, which makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So your, your velocity, if this is your acceleration, your velocity will look something like this. It is a quadratic parabola, I think. Yeah, it's a parabola. There. Your x squared. But then you can, uh, if you wanted to find out your distance, you just integrate that further. So you have your, you, you increase the power, so it's cubed, and then it becomes x cubed divided by 3. And you check again, bring the power down, 3x, cancel, x squared. And that's how you check. And that's obviously going to look even a, a steeper curve. Uh, well, it'll, it'll, it, that graph will obviously be a steeper curve, but it'll be divided by 3, so as a result, it will, it'll go underneath this bit, but then come out and like that. And obviously on the other side, it'll be going down, but that's the negative. And you, you can always work out, basically, from this, like... D the acceleration at any point, the distance at any point, and it's it's quite useful. So when you want to find um, turning points, which is comes up quite a lot. So for example, um, you have your graph, and you want to work out if it's a maximum or, min or a minimum. So you have your graph, and it's it tells you to find, prove that this point is a local maximum. So what you do is you uh, you differentiate it, uh, then what you do is you differentiate it and you'd find that the gradient is zero, so that proves the turning point or it could be a point of inflection. Then what you do is you want to find out if it's a maximum or a minimum. You could always just look at the points next to it and then work out, oh, is it going up and, and stuff like that. But you can also differentiate it twice and by differenti differentiating it twice you get the gradient of the gradient. So as you can see, here's a gradient, but the gradient here is increasing, increasing, and then it comes and de decreases, as you can see. So you, you have a high, you have a positive gradient over here, you have a negative gradient over here. So at this point where the gradient is zero, the gradient is decreasing. And that's what happens when you have a local maximum. So when you differentiate it twice, 
if the number you get is negative, that shows it's a maximum because it means that the gradient is decreasing. But if you're over here and it's a local minimum, the gradient's uh, negative over here and it's positive over here, which means it must be increasing. And then you know it's a it's a minimum point. So what you have to do then is just differentiate twice to find out whether it's positive or negative. And that tells you whether it's just um, maximum or minimum, or it could be a point of inflection, like for example of the graph x cubed, where you'd have just primarily this, and at the origin you'd find that, yep, it's a zero gradient, but also the change is zero as well, so that's a point of inflection. And all, all this works out, so you can do your calculus.